Ninja, of course, we talked about last week with oh, the right Ninja. to diversify their audience. Be a good thing. On a person was on CNBC. They also tweeted out a video of that interview with the caption: "Tyler Ninja." Ninja Blevin says he makes $500,000 a month playing video games. A headline that, of course, was received one of two ways. People going, well, yeah, he is a massive creator. And, of course, the he makes how much for playing video <laughs> games? My personal response to that is what's funny is if he actually has things in the right place, he could potentially be making much, much more. It all comes down to audience size, their participation, their loyalty. And I will say, on a personal note, and I, and I know I hit this last time I talked about it, watching that interview, holy fuck. Fuck, the gaming community has a fantastic mainstream representative right now. If you're even remotely interested in the space, uh, I recommend you check out the interview. But also, too, it seems that thanks to the rise of Ninja Is there and a that, that months? massive Potty mouth record-breaking clowns? Drake stream, there are now more people coming to Twit. That including former Viner and now YouTuber Logan Paul. Seemingly realizing that there was a massive opportunity, Logan Paul on Sunday joined Twitch. He ended up snagging over 100,000 followers without even going live. Although some people in response were very vocal about them not wanting him on the platform. But also some, including streamer Summit 1G, see potential. Saying, I don't think people should be upset at all about Logan Paul on Twitch. The amount of people he can bring over from YouTube can only be a good thing for the site and has potential of some of those people staying and lurking other channels. Use your business mind on this one, dude. And one more thing, if you're worried about toxic 12-year-olds rolling to Twitch, how about having some confidence in your own content to help shape their personality and morals? And personally, I will say, I kind of agree with what Summit 1G is saying. Big creators jumping on a platform, whether you like them or not, <laughs> usually pretty good for the rest of the community. But I also want to put an asterisk on that opinion because it also has to do with what that person does after they jump to the platform. Is Paul or anyone else jumping on Twitch because they want to diversify their audience, they want to make content specifically for that <laughs> platform, or is it just a short-term soulless cash? grab of YouTubers realizing that maybe they have an audience that's not normally on Twitch, and even if they don't care about the content, they can convert those people into a ton of Twitch Prime subscriptions, thus making a shit ton of money. And for me, this story actually ends up being much bigger than Logan Paul, though Logan Paul is a big part of it. It appears that it's been trending this way for a while, but more and more these days that we, we're seeing YouTubers not, not necessarily fully jumping ship to Twitch, but a lot now incorporating it, whether it be the H3 podcasts of the world, or just Casey Neistat just opening boxes in front of the camera. It's going to be so interesting to see what happens with Twitch over the next one to three years. And so well, a question like his, I'll pass off. I like his DeFranco pillow back there behind his head. You, if you're an avid user of Twitch, is what, what is your personal takeaway from all these new people jumping on board? Are you excited or are you worried that this could turn the site that you love into something else? I'd love to know what you think in those comments.